Hi, I'm Dr. Francis. I'm a world-renowned wildlife nutritionist. You may not have heard of me, but your Sumatran tiger sure has. So let's talk about the link between nutrition and behavior today. <laughs> what? That's how they communicate with us. Go to a zoo, please. Does your dog have any behavioral quirks or maybe it's difficult to train? Or maybe you just have a new puppy and you want to know how you can support their temperament and a successful training long term. Training and nutrition have a huge important link. And it's such a big topic, I brought in the big guns today. I brought in my friend Fraser, which is a certified dog behavior specialist. And he'll be able to help us understand the link between nutrition and behavior. Hey Fraser, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. How are you doing? Very good. So in a nutshell, what is the link between nutrition and behavior? Well, the nutshell is quite simple. Good nutrition equals better comfort. Mm. Better comfort equals better behavior. Mm. Okay? But don't just take my word for it. In 2007, Cambridge University did a study on exactly this. Mm. What is the link between nutrition and behavior right. in dogs. Right. Now, of course they looked at not just dogs, they looked at cats and other mammals as well as humans, but dogs were part of this study. And one of the big examples that I'm going to use is the bioavailability of tryptophan. Mm, so, amino acid, tryptophan. Tryptophan is the amino acid which is the precursor to serotonin. Oh, the feel good hormone. Exactly. Right. So, you feel good, you behave better. Mm. If you don't feel so good, you get a little bit ratty. Little bit annoyed. Yeah. yeah. So this is effectively what they found in the study as well. Oh. So as much as we know, yes, great, now we know for a fact that there is a link between nutrition and behavior. Mm. But to me, this is not the most important factor about this. Okay. The most important factor is why it's important. So, quite frankly, over the last 15 to 30 years, the amount of knowledge and scientific discovery that we've gone through in canine behavior and cognitive ability is quite tremendous. And this is, this is why you're seeing such a massive shift yeah. in training methodologies and the way that we do things. Yeah. You know, what we did 30 years ago isn't necessarily the correct thing to do these no. days. The way we're feeding our dogs, the way we're training our dogs, everything is different. Uh, absolutely everything. The way we support our dogs, the way we understand our dogs. Yeah. So simple things that still blows people's mind, like our dogs do not feel guilt mm -hmm. in the same way that we do. Mm -hmm. Everybody goes, oh look how guilty my dog is. They don't feel it that way. They don't. They don't. And not to go down that rabbit hole, but effectively, we would feel guilt as in, oh, I really shouldn't have done that. I'll never do that again. Yeah. But dogs feel guilt as in, oh, I'm reading my owner's reaction. I it's don't, upset. exactly. How do I dissuade that? Exactly, they're not, they're not worried about what they did. They're worried about what you're doing. Mm. So, and that's nothing wrong with it. Effectively, that is because of the cognitive ability of the dog. Mm. Okay, so all of these discoveries are fantastic. Mm. These are all behavioral discoveries. Yes. However, we also have a lot of increase in what we might want to say more passive behavioral modifications mm. such as things like primal actions like chewing or steady pace jogging okay. such as bioacoustics oh, what's that so bioacoustics is effectively music which has been designed for the dog's ears wow. there's been loads of studies done on that as well which helps calm them down and help their behavior and of course nutrition and nutrition so nutrition is a big one because for you guys who literally do formulate diet exactly for every dog it's certainly not passive no but for your dog owner it's fairly passive mm. buy the food feed the dog mm. they don't think mu that much about it no. so when they understand that there is a connection mm. and when we think about this over the world there is millions of dogs every single year who are euthanized because of behavior. Yeah. They are literally killed because of behavior. Yeah. There's millions of dogs that are given up to shelters yeah. every year because of behavior. Or too difficult to manage. Exactly. Yeah. Now, as pet owners, as dog lovers, mm. 
And this goes for not just dogs, but cats and any other mammals. It's our responsibility to do everything that we can to ensure that we are giving our animals the best chance to succeed. Yeah. The best chance to live harmoniously with us or be the best canine citizens that they can be. Canine citizens, I like that. Yep. Yeah. So Fraser, are there any specific nutrient links with um, overexcitement or reactivity or even territorial reactivity? There actually is. Okay. And the example I'll use with this is a study that was done by the Veterinary Medical Association in 2000. 2000. And they actually did a study specifically on overexcitement and territorial reactivity. So they had a pool of, if memory serves me right, around about 200 dogs. That's a good sample size. It's a good sample size. All of whom had territorial reactivity okay. or overexcitement. Okay. Not an uncommon behavior for dogs. Mm. So quite an easy one to find. Yeah. So they split the test sample to the controlled diet. So one sample did not change their diet at all. Okay. And the other sample, they changed to high protein diet. Are we assuming it's kibble? No, no, this was fresh food. It was fresh food, okay. Yeah. So what they effectively found was that due to the better bioavailability of the high protein diet, the dogs were actually calmer mm. that were on that test sample. Okay. Okay? Yeah. As opposed to the other ones, which obviously there was no behavioral change. Yeah. So with that, we can assume that a lot of that had to do with the bioavailability to the amino acids we were just talking about. To defend. But it's not just that. Okay. We can quite accurately surmise that those behaviours were changed from something a lot simpler. Now, I'm sure that you could go into the deep nutritional science about this, but I'm going to keep this quite I'd simple. Love to. <laughs> There's a time and a place, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to keep this quite simple. Yeah. Okay. So my nutritional background basically comes from human nutrition for myself. Okay. And one of the big parts that I found, coming from somebody who has had to go on a weight loss journey, who does like to try and keep myself in fairly good shape, is that if I do not get enough protein, mm. I do not feel like I am recovering quick enough. Okay. If I have got too much simple carbohydrates in my diet, mm. I feel sluggish. My gut does not feel as settled. Yeah. If I'm eating too much sugar, you're getting big highs and deep crashes. Yeah. Not just in your gut. The not blood sugar going exactly, up and down. Exactly, exactly. So all of these things yeah. that impact us obviously impact our dogs as well. So when you've got a dog that's on a high carbohydrate diet, yeah. they're having those peaks and troughs yeah. as well in their blood glucose. Yeah. So they're also getting that same peak and trough in their mental state. Mm. In the same way that if you've got an irritable gut, if you've eaten something that's too spicy or something that you don't agree with, or something you're allergic to, yeah. you don't feel good within yourself. No. So what happens to your temperament? I feel irritable. Exactly. Yeah, I don't and feel like I want to just chill. Exactly. Yeah. So for some reason, people don't link the same thing to their dogs. Mm -hmm. They think their dogs need to be steady the whole time, but the dog might have got hold of a whole load of mashed potatoes from Christmas dinner. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, the dog nipped the guest. It was out of nowhere. There was no warning. Yeah. Well, the fact that your dog has just had a massive glucose crash. Super excitable. And, and exactly. then crashed, yeah. So this is all coming around to nutrition directly impacting the behavior. Yeah. In the same way, if we eat crap, if we don't exercise, if we don't get what we need in our health, mm. or we don't feel as good within our own bodies, mm. in our own minds, yeah. our dogs are the same. Now, when you take this into account of stress buildup, then it becomes very, very important. Mm. The same as us, dogs' stress builds up over time. Okay. It's not isolated incidents. Mm. So let's say, for example, you wake up in the morning, mm -hmm. you want to have a shower, yeah. but your hot water heater's broken. Oh. So now you're having a freezing cold shower. Yeah. Bang. Yeah. Small amount of stress is Small amount. Up there. Big it, amount. It's a small amount, big amount, depending on who you are. Then 
you're walking into the kitchen to get a coffee and yes. you stub your toe on the coffee table. Okay. Spilling your coffee all over the floor. Oh no. Oh no. Terrible. No. That's me- that means I get no coffee? No coffee. 100% irritation immediately. But then we change that. So you've got a big jump there. And yeah. Then we decide to go to Starbucks on the way. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Some people like it. Okay. So you get a and you take a venti whatever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What does caffeine do to your, blo- your body? It will make me very, very energetic and less sleepy, jittery. Positive stress. Yeah. But positive stress and negative stress go into the same bucket. Oh, okay. Okay. So all your stress hormones just stack up on top of each other. Yeah. Doesn't matter if they're positive or negative. Yeah. Now we all have a threshold. Mm. When our dogs or when we reach that threshold, our patience level is in the gutter. Mm-hmm. And this is why a lot of behavior problems happen because people are not aware no. of their dog's stressors. Yeah. Now bring that back to nutrition. Yeah. If your dog every single morning is eating utter crap, yeah. that's putting a massive chunk of stress onto that stack, yeah. leaving only this much before you start reaching the threshold. Yeah. So you're dramatically reducing your dog's ability to handle stress every day. Mm. So it's not just about how nutrition impacts your dog's behavior. Mm. It's how nutrition with the rest of the world yeah. impacts your dog's behavior. Mm. Does that make sense? Thank you so much for your time and talking about the link between nutrition and behavior. Why don't you tell everyone where they can find you? You can find us at noble-canine.com. Thanks everyone for listening to this video. Please subscribe, like this video, and follow us on our Facebook, Instagram, and maybe soon TikTok. Oh. Don't be shy to comment.